See if it works, man. They got that uh, one gigabyte uh, cap that's just really uh, fuckery right there, buddy. Uh, I, I've, have you not been deleting the videos off or are you leaving them sitting there? Well, the, I have been, I have deleted videos. I've del deleted the vast majority of videos. And uh, at the same time, uh, there has been, uh, uh, there has been a, uh, an issue uh, with the, uh, the videos actually being recorded. But I'll chalk that off to I handed over the host uh, position and left the meeting and uh, came back. Uh, or actually, I restarted the meeting on another laptop, came back, and that video was lost. So, uh. so you know, it's like I'm over here going, okay, you know, Zoom, I love you, mean it, you're great, okay? But we're still getting stood up on recording and, and, and stocking it for uh, – the future and all that so uh, yeah it doesn't look like marco will join uh which is fine i was so happy he was able to uh, sit into that meeting uh and i was so happy he was able to uh do it without uh all of the administrative you know i mean we we just kind of set him up and he did it um because uh, i didn't really uh, hold his hand through that i just kept speaking to what he asked and uh went on his recommendation yes please sit in as an observer jesse got the buy-in happy and um and then Marco showed up and was able to really see all that. Um, but uh, the hour before that was me and Ryan going over um, just an update on uh, on all the juice that fuels what Ryan was able and Revneet was able to deploy during that integration meeting. That reputation system, uh, it's hard. You got to learn it. Um, the two is uh, the uh, token path the tokenization path we just learned uh, jesse is struggling with a bees token uh, okay don't care that's secondary to me right now we're going to build toward a token for the tmn side uh, and jesse may may not be able to use no 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 uh we'll have a tmn token the, the, there's complexity here that i could speak to you about now to say jesse is one compartment of getting this whole thing moving toward the EOS and EOSIO community based on uh, increasing the bandwidth uh, across language barriers. So thanks for listening to that one uh, because uh, that gets lost when we start thinking things are the center of the room. And, uh, but there's the good thing is that there's such good work. What Jesse is doing is such good work. It looks like it is the only thing going on, but uh, nah, man, soon we're gonna have this uh, no. quote soon we're going to have this quote administrative uh uh tool uh, for our own translation foundation almost inspired by like june dam and uh, actually it was shock cruise that first brought it up we can be uh translating fractally papers so uh, we'll see we'll be able to play with the translate tool it's just a uh it's pretty rough but at least it uses the neural network it's, it's organized ui is good you'll you'll like it i think a lot i think you're going to really like their uh, marketplace um, and uh, does it have its limits? Yes. And are we going to be helping them? Yes. And are we going to be testing it? Yes. And so, uh, and we're going to ask them to uh, evolve it specifically for us here or there as we feel fit. Yes. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, an R and D environment. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. And thanks. I know, and I know that uh, Patrick's been giving me some insight into what he's doing with the uh, Translate Me group too. And um, I just, I don't know if you've been. Uh, checking it out, but did you see the sites I set up? Um, where I, 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 I should, I didn't really want to release them publicly because I'm not really ready, but I just said screw it because I wanted to get SEO value because there's a lot of timely stuff. So, uh, I, I put in a WordPress plugin and I enabled every single language on it, so it translates on the fly, and there's like over a hundred different languages <laughs> to choose from, I, I did, but I don't, I, I don't know what the quality of it is. Question, yes, I did see it. And I, uh, I took a screenshot and I put, posted it uh, to you. Uh, basically, I can't even remember. <laughs> basically, I, I posted a screenshot to you uh, that showed that drop down. And I said, it's beautiful. Uh, because it, now, the very biggest reason it's beautiful is because you're using, like you're, you're engaging as, a, as, I understand you're architecting it, you're building it for users, okay? But you're actually using it. You know, like like we just all six, six of us were sitting around bumping heads going, why aren't people, uh, YouTube people doing these things? I, I don't want to chime in on that because my, my answer was a little different than the three.
that uh, were were placed by Ryan out there. Right, right, right. But but, uh, but the tr- truth is, I think the very biggest one is that uh, it's a technical. Uh, it 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 paralyzes ninety nine point nine 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 percent of YouTubers based on a technical um, uh, mist M I S T. So they they see the mist. No way. And, and that's what's the barrier. Now, has uh, Mr. Beast broken through? Okay, sure. Uh, has o- other people talking about, are other people talking about future potential Vietnamese markets? Maybe. Are they bringing up the, are they bringing the 10 major technical uh, uh, studies together all, all and move forward the way that Jesse's speaking to and the way that Ryan is speaking to? No. <laughs> so why aren't they? It's because of the mist. That that's my uh, my answer to that question. Uh, it's it, it uh, Tung Su Art of War will tell you antagonize your enemy when he is, when you are small and he is large. Uh, why? Because a distractor is a debilitating son of a gun. And when you've got something as distracting as ten major overwhelming obstacle, technically, you're done. You're in an R&D environment at that point. And you think a YouTuber is going to really shift over to an R&D environment? No, no. He's going to say something irrational like. Uh, this, the quality of my content uh, is the most important thing here. Well, if he actually listed it out in a sequence of ta- uh, in a, a, a delineated list of tasks and assigned priorities based on a real technical study, he'd realize the priority is probably more like what Jesse is is really championing. And Ryan is like, tell me about it. That's why we're trying to, <laughs> that's why we're building this from the ground up. So uh, thanks for listening there, uh, uh, Doug, because I did, I did, uh, I, I would have loved to have chatted, uh, but that wasn't the meeting to chat on. Uh, I was just so happy at y'all's in five minutes in, everybody smiles and says, don't worry about me. That's all that needed to happen in that meeting was it's basically, uh, Ryan, what you got? Wow. Okay, great. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Um, what's up with the, what happened? Did you catch all the dialogue? Who is Pong? Pong well, Pong is a guy that's slowly introducing himself to a uh, translation um, um, conversation, and he happens to be Chinese, I, I believe. Uh, is he, is, getting, is I, don't of... know, I don't know him. So what's happening, who he is, is, a, is basically call it an outsider uh, starting to speak to translation as an insider, which I think will be revealed soon that he's old school Pong. Look, I've seen him around over the last two to three years. He's cool. Uh, who okay. is he? We don't know. And 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 uh, I was called on this week about that, and I said this is very relevant. He is very welcome, dude. He was say he said some powerful things to me that like were blowing my mind. Because you know what? It's a it's something that's changing that no one's really discussing and talking about. But I know every time someone looks into block production, like the last time I. Remember when uh, Chris Barnes was still at the end of his chief delegate position, he looked, he said, well, I've been looking into the research of block production. And they're like, what do you come up with, Chris? He's all, it doesn't, well, I don't want to get into it. It's like, it doesn't like, Careful, it doesn't Doug. like- uh, that's right. The first thing when you start, well, I, I got all of that stuff in our very relevant conversation in our translation meeting. And as, as soon as we start talking BPs, fine with me, it's too big. It's too big of a subject. So right. if you want to dive into oblivion? Sure, that's fine. Well, right now we're just getting to know Pong. And if right. oblivion is a way to say who and what, where, when, and how, and oh, that's Pong, fine with me. He <laughs> wants, if, if we want to bring up BP stuff, we can talk about it as long as uh, it's it's reason, rational, all that stuff. Well, we'll get to know Pong. We're not we're not solving the BP. We're not. Well, I know, I know. I was just I couldn't help but noticing yeah. that come up. I was just like, oh gosh, you know, I, I, you know how I am. I just keep spotting new inquiries into different things yeah Yeah, well you know i think what you're asking is uh, how to differentiate between something that's very big versus something that's uh, very uh, simple and uh, that's everything in the world either you're not doing or you're doing (laughs) you know and you're obviously uh in 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 absolutely committed to doing so when it comes to say uh exploring pong or exploring the bp whatever whatever uh, that's all very valid. Uh, how long does that time ticker last on how much Doug's going to put his m- money and attention to? Probably pretty short, if you ask me. Right, right. Now, right, now right. if something gets up happening and he can go back to doing again, that's what's going to happen. Well, we're having a handshake with Pong. 
and we're going to see what happens at that point. I don't expect anything out of it, but but he, he might uh, continue to come back with things that do verge on simplicity and actionability, uh, wherein that is where the foundation is uh, is uh, is uh, obviously uh, moving and, and happy to, to, to exist because as it lights up our eyes, I, I think you you uh, you said it's very exciting just a minute ago it's very exciting you know i was like yeah we're gonna have like this marketplace tool it that's what's exciting is to actually do something so the pong thing is an introduction hello pong who are you wait what are we talking about okay great 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 and nothing almost nothing more so he he brought light to the chinese traditional and uh simplified that was that was simple that was good stuff and, but he only reiterated what she had said she from crypto lions uh, where she originally threw the flag that said traditional and simplified are very relevant. And then Pong was like, they're actually very similar. I was like, oh, okay. First, we've heard of that. Oh, and by the way, nothing works. You can't translate them. Oh, okay, noted. But that's changing also because uh, I hadn't got the soup. I got the latest update and it does not account for traditional versus uh, simplified uh, uh, casual Chinese. Uh, but it does accommodate for a huge leap in what Translate Me is able to uh, provide for translation. I just haven't gone over the top and said, hey, by the way, traditional versus uh, simplified trans uh, Chinese, please. And, oh, that's not a part of this new new. App. OK, that's fine, because I'm not putting traditional versus simplified as a major priority right now. What do we got here, buddy? Uh, you got it. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, the link was above. I even put a, a, a finger pointing up. <laughs> but that's not good enough. People, people communicating are run into these things over and over and over again. I'm very sympathetic to that. So that's great. Marco is going to be able to join. I'm probably going to have to take a break and uh, hand you the keys to this uh, aftermath. But I do want to say high five to uh, Marco before I go. And I want to listen to what you have to say after I gave you all that. Uh, I'm actually curious because Nathan James just messaged me something. Yeah, go for it. Do your stuff. We'll wait until uh, Marco comes. Uh, well, I was, I was just processing what it was, but I'll tell you is uh, he um, sent me a link on Gab. Okay. Uh, there's a guy named Thomas who's new to Fractally. Okay. Um, he was uh, introduced to Fractally or to me through the Fractally on Orbit team and Bayos. Actually, I first met him in Bayos. The, and uh, at some point, uh, he joined Fractally and then got active in the Telegram groups and stuff. And then he, he, he rounded up two more people out of Bayos or uh, that uh, because because he started talking about Fractally there and I monitor those chats. I started engaging in that Telegram group. And I think there's two more people that joined through my invite link in Bayos which I don't know if they've, you know, come to the week, the weekly meeting and voted in high because I didn't make the last one. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that that's happening. And so this guy, Thomas, uh, is real amped. He's excited. He's got this whole new energy. That's like, he's seeing all this stuff happen. So I'm trying to keep that going with him, you know? Uh, yeah. It, it, it should be sustainable. Uh, on right. its own. I'm testing sustainability right. because our inclination is to keep the fire stoked. Uh, careful because, uh, well, the way I keep the fire stoked is I just do my, do my thing, which is when something comes up and I see it, I like to take action. And so when he suggested, uh, using gab i'm like i have a gab account you know so i got in there and so so instead of just going in there and doing it i live streamed it because it only takes me a few clicks you know and to have that video and to timestamp it and to send him a link for it i took thomas's advice that made him so you know it just blew his mind that i could do that it absolutely was super and it easy for my me. mind listening to how simple you assimilated to the idea of that sustainability <laughs> model being one that you just get to chase after whatever you want instead of it being some kind of binding, like, uh, yeah, I just do what's, well, I do what I think creates the most value. And a lot of times acting in the moment and taking action is the best time to do it. If you can't respond immediately, you don't catch the other person's attention. And if you spawn right away, and you do consistently people all of a sudden get this notion, man, this guy's a man of action. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's a, yeah, like I just described you as a doer, and uh, likewise, I'm trying to sharpen my sword on quick turning and uh, presentary, momentary, uh, 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 basically. Work hey, let Marco in. He's here, isn't he? Uh, absolutely. Before we we, uh, I just want to like wrap to that and just hand it over to Marco. Yeah, okay. So go for it, bro. Hey guys, where's he? 
How I can't stay I long, see? but um, what's, going on? Uh, what's the topic here? Uh, I'll say this. I don't understand your question. Would you repeat it? Um, what's, uh, what are we discussing here? Oh, thank you. That is the perfect thing I wanted to hear because uh, basically, uh, so cool seeing you uh, there at that meeting uh, uh, there, Marco. And uh, it's a big day today. Um, prior to that, I was able to meet with Ryan. Uh, we, we do like every two, two weeks or so. Uh, was very high also. So the productivity on the meeting, the observing was very high. And that is limited for my, for my two cents. Uh, I was interested in uh, seeing what Ryan had to put forward and watching the group receive it. And it was like a quick one, two in five to 10 minutes. I was a happy guy. Mm -hmm. That was a lot okay. of stuff. Um, yeah. And then Jesse, uh, Jesse wanted to move, move to the other stuff, which was very good also. But uh, the, the biggest thing is, um, in my opinion, is uh, uh, so, so that, that question, that good question at the end about, uh, about uh, like, uh, it, it goes into the minutia of like J Jesse using EOS as a user, uh, Jesse uh, uh, creating business model and, and, and EOS is all through it and all this stuff happened. Well, um, the thing is, is um, the, uh, the, the, in this case, the bees, uh, you know, kind of like marketing using translation. Well, translation is a technical problem. It's a real technical problem. And so uh, that's why the, uh, the, it's not common. That's why Mr. Beast is breaking through, but uh, nobody else, trust me, we just went over it. But basically, if, you, if, you, if you're a YouTuber and you create a task, a task array and you prioritize those tasks, the uh, technical solution for uh, translation and the uh, technical solution for marketing to new audiences is so complicated that you're gonna just irrationally mark that as low priority for yourself. Even though Jesse is onto it. He, he says, whoa, whoa, we've discovered something here. I say, oh, I totally agree, Jesse. Your good idea is a good one. And Ryan says, we've been thinking about this too, buddy. It's not just you. We're going into the kernel layer and we're going to bring this forward. And that's where, uh, and that's kind of where Ryan and I converged a year and a half ago whenever uh, I opened up the EOS translation portal. And then uh, we began to build toward what we're seeing now, which is obviously very exciting. Uh, that is uh, a, uh, you know, it reduces to our mission statement, basically. It's not as much a portal as it is increase the bandwidth. You don't just go to a place to get all the stuff, you know, no, you just increase the bandwidth uh, across a wide scale wide scale. So I'll stop talking on that one, Marco. So uh, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> the stuff uh, Jesse talked about, um, I caught uh, in the uh, development, I think even before the ENF, um, not from B1, but uh, from the core group of developers that eventually became the ENF, um, expanding EOS's reach. Um, uh, to bring in dollars to have independent models. <laughs> Ultimately, though, um, blockchain is uh, it's the ledger for the internet. And by converting things to dollars or even to crypto, even to Bitcoin, is an extra step. What um, the Venezuelan team are doing and the uh, using EOS to buy products to actual goods and services and have it in their their uh, shop, place of business, uh, you're essentially putting the uh, active sale transaction um, on the EOS blockchain. So you're taking your accounting ledger and replacing it with the, with the blockchain, which is what it's meant to do. And uh, from an international administrative point of view of accounting ledgers and aviation and the coordination of the airspace and how governments and business is needed to share um, data uh, or accounting, um, this is what's needed. Um, when, then you take you know, the, the token idea, which is a big problem for us in the US. And I, I just figured the Translate Me team, Orion would know that it was that the reason why the bees and there's not more tokens is the issue that we're facing here. Um, so, um, 
you mind uh, if I interject real quick? There's a lot of confusion around that token and that meeting. So uh, we talking Jesse B's B's token? I think so. Because TMN, Translate Me Token, a token that's on NEO blockchain, got $30,000 seed funding from NEO a year and a half ago. They want to peg it or they want to bring it onto EOS in a elegant way. I yes, want it's, yep. Is Translate Me based in the US? Uh, I don't that's know, a, South Africa. That's the issue. Yeah, that's the issue. Uh, that's why you probably have um, someone like Brock Pierce living in Puerto Rico. He said it. Um, so what, what Jesse said is something that if you, we're in blockchain, so we don't see this, uh, but I try to reach the public and talking with, uh, especially through Steemit and the people, are still, they're still like years back on Steemit. <laughs> so they're kind of more in touch with the regular people. Jesse, what Jesse said about the bees can earn dollars and then pay its people in EOS is something that's very controversial. Something that would cause militia <laughs> to attack blockchain. And there's a way to circumvent, not circumvent them, but to bypass all thing. And that is when you do it is the accounting ledger. If the if the goods or sales, if the the ultimate end is just going on to a fiat currency and then coming off onto a crypto, but there's another Amazon transaction taking place or crypto to crypto or fiat to fiat, uh, US to China or whatever. If blockchain is meant to jump in between that and say, you don't need to do that, you can take ownership of that good right through there. So I think that's ultimately the medium. Now, going with the Translate, Translate Me coin, um, it seemed like he wanted to expand, Ryan wanted to expand upon that. I don't know if you wanted to integrate it with the bees or not. Um, no, 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 we don't. No, we, we, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well ca ca careful there. That's why I, I, I had to interject because it's a confusing thing. Uh, so uh, basically uh, the design of the uh, uh, TMN on EOS has not really begun. So there is no TMN on EOS in fact, to say TMN on EOS is not something I say in public. But once that design starts going into a, a go mode upward, which I think will be within this quarter, uh, then we can start looking at it and going, okay, what is it? Because it's at minimum a peg from where it is on the NEO blockchain. Now it's on the EOS. We could all start studying the, uh, the model and how it's organized. But in theory, it will contain a identity and a reputation piece, uh, uh, not to mention the, the, the transactional uh, uh, value flow uh, from, uh, from the corporate uh, uh, like uh, kind of treasure and also and all the users and translator. Uh, oh, and the, uh, the, the clientele, the users, I guess, the clientele and all that stuff. So it'll be a hub for, 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 for doing all that uh, payment but also to pay the translators and the corporation. So uh, how do you get that pegged over to EOS so that all our users and our people can be plugging in like Jesse? <laughs> now, if Jesse has a bees token, sure, whatever. But you see the TMN is gonna be very, very uh, localized to the translation uh, kernel. Uh, not, not bees, is, bees is an overlay. It's a secondary. So there's a lot of these like compartments and Doug and I just said it, uh, it's easy to get lost in one of them. And that hence, that's the reason for the foundation. Because so we- Foundation yeah. is uh, intimate with the bees. Absolutely. Foundation is into it with everything and anything, even to include June Dam this past week, popping in and saying, hey guys, you're getting a buzz. Uh, hey, I got a Spanish document, what say you? And we're like, uh, 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 and then we do a bunch of stuff. We learn a bunch of stuff. And then we're like, uh, that was interesting. But this morning I got access to the admin uh, uh, neural network proofing uh, portal to where uh, I think we could have copy pasted Jew damn stuff and at least had it had it net neural network translated, at, which is 75% of the work. Uh, but but we could have done it through Google also. So but but the future is the neural network, uh, machine translation, not not using Google or Microsoft or or Apple or any of that. So so we're trying to build it on you know like sustainably, you know, for Web three. 
Um, so I really look forward to using this marketplace, you know, and growing with it. So we have admin keys now as of this morning. So I'll put that together eventually and put it in the hands of our team. Cause then we can, we'll be able to start fucking with it big time. But, but, uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the foundation wants to get its hands into, into everything and be at least a one-stop absolutely in the know on, on, on all of the, the, uh, the, the players, uh, you know, all the projects, all the players, that's the implied, that's implied by the idea of a foundation and be like a center hub that knows, at least knows who's who and everything uh, related to uh, uh cross language communication not communication but cross language communication because these are more like communication they want to do marketing and communication but uh, but we're just we're just focusing on the translation is that is that uh does that sound legit legit sure um there's uh a lot morphing right now. So uh, touching on the specific thing that's going to last is obviously tough. Um, There's definitely an eye opener with what uh, Ryan's doing as possible. Um, and uh, the other guy that space we can see. Uh, so Ravneet is his CTO, his chief technology officer, and he really came through today. But Ryan, uh, or translate me, is a player. The bees are right now are a player. Uh, 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 Patrick from MindWeb is a player. Um, the foundation is the the ENF uh, needs translation. Fractally, I wonder. I'm wondering what, what about, their translation. Um, what about EOS support? And their. Um... I got to, uh, Randall online for 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 once we have the bees and the MindWeb uh, demonstrations because we just want to build demos and usability, and then we can just like go at we could just start like just introducing letting you know hooking things up and connecting them all right now we're just building the uh the, the uh the machine translation kind of entry point into our community uh and jesse is uh is helping enormously that way uh patrick uh, did as well he stood up real quick using their api which was our palmello for season two free apis free apis okay uh he's helping build it so Jesse is also helping build it with the funding of the ENF because uh, he's asked that that meeting was basically, hey, Ryan, how is your proposal for the ENF coming? Because Jesse's just going to take Ryan's proposal and fold it into Jesse's proposal and say, we want this money. And he fact, at that meeting, he said, start clocking your hours, Ryan. <laughs> I was like, I mean, this thing is working very well in the next quarter to two quarters. Uh, we should have solid demos for, hey, look at what we're doing. Hey, Jeff, plug in. Hey, uh, Randall, uh, EOS support. Hey, uh, uh, anybody. Uh, we're going to have people as, start. Yeah. As far as um, the translate needs reach, is that uh, on other blockchains too? No. They need users, and that's how we're helping them. They, they basically need, uh, need to plug into uh, to people who can show that their stuff really has potential and can, uh, and can shine. So they're... They're an independent blockchain connected with the US. Right now, they're more of a independent corporation connecting with EOS that has a blockchain plan that is already launched and uh, gotcha. being an accounting for this kind of value, but it's, it's immature. Um, they have a token. Uh, so I would say they're, they're, a, they're a corporation more than they're a, a blockchain. Right. That's where, uh, that's where the confusion lies. I wasn't sure if they're already active on another chain or not. No, they uh, just have a blockchain plan that, that is, uh, got some kind of pre-alpha, uh, get up on it and it's already for some being... reason, for some reason I thought, um, they heard EOS EVM. And they said, hey, let's go to EOS before everybody else. <laughs> but uh, no, that helps. That helps. Yeah. And I'll continue to answer quick question like quick questions like that because there's about probably 10 more here or there that I, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to 
uh, encounter with with you because I can't really see what questions are obvious, but uh, they'll come up. Uh, you know, but I really want to. Uh, I guess I'm excited about basically uh, the Jesse demonstration and then also the uh, the TMN token, but also standing up the foundation. So right now we're just running legwork on can we build a sustainable foundation where we're subject matter experts within this year? Probably it's not going to take too long to be like the dudes that know exactly what's up with regards to translation. Hey, um, can I interject something? Yeah. So Marco, just to give you a history and context, how I got into this team was Mark approached me and asked me. And at that point I was pretty much like I had said to myself, uh, like I was, I was ready to do it right from the beginning. And um, even though I told Mark, let me think about it for a day. And part of the reason I was interested is he was the first person that reached out to me to do anything, you know, just like engage me at some less than superficial level, which I was very much interested in having, uh, you know, sort of feeling like an outsider. But more importantly, um, for the last couple of years, two or three years now, I've had access to a software uh, that is a, it's just like, like an API service that allows me to connect to YouTube, uh, a YouTube channel, either my own or somebody else's, and I can translate up to 10 languages at a time. And so I had this software forever, but I never played around with it or used it because I, I wasn't in a publishing mode yet. And so when this need came up, having... I had already spent three months, I think, because when I first came into the ecosystem, I gave Jesse access to that software. I realized you need help with language translation and I gave it to, he didn't even touch it. He didn't have, he didn't take the time to figure it out. So when I realized he never did anything with it, just by the virtue of the fact he never logged in or was too busy or whatever, I started figuring it out. And it was when I figured out that software because I saw this need in the EOS community for language translation. Well, I don't have any content I need translated, but these guys do. And so he approaches me right at that same time. I'm like, sure. So it's funny because like Shek Cruz and Oscar are probably our only two other people that have like multilingual capacity for language translation. But we're Mark and I and the value we're providing have nothing to do with the actual translation of the languages. You know, it has more to do with the scoping of what's going on and how do we how do we identify problems how do we go about solving them what is the value that we're discovering so so in one sense we're, we're wearing the hat of the eos translation foundation team but in another sense i'm wearing like five other hats where i'm using this sort of you know placeholder to have access to you marco like and talk to you about things that might be outside the i mean especially especially for americans especially where i grew up um in the uh new york metro area you can walk um you can walk like 10 blocks and hear eight different languages. Uh, right. That's both on New York and Jersey side. And the, uh, for, for a while, you hear people saying, oh, they speak Spanish or whatever, but it's really Italian. <laughs> and it may be listed as Spanish. But <laughs> right. Um, so I have Italian friends that say, yeah, no, I know exactly what he's saying. It's like, but he's not speaking Italian. It's like, no, no, but it's so close. Yeah, that's common. That happens. So knowing that's a big deal. Um, and I've, in my in my writings, have gone into trying to translate certain things because EOS has been a global community, um, just to pick up maybe some of the nuances. But yeah, no, the the difference between culture, like even though they speak the language is spoken the same, how the words are used is part of translation. It's the most challenging and the most expensively paid part of translation. Um, so no, absolutely. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you uh, want to get at. I'm just looking at um, uh, threat assessment, opportunity, um, current state, um, and things like that. Um, <laughs> I got to tell you yeah. about threat as threat assessment. Just something. Uh, Fred Patrick is being uh, uh, impersonated. He has accounts that are using his graphics and logos. So when I'm trying to tag him, it's not his Twitter handle. When he realized, when he explained that to me, I started documenting it. And at the same time, when I started searching for him on Google, the first search result I did for Nova Crypto LLC, exactly like his Twitter handle, had only 76 results. I searched for it three times after that within the next 30 seconds to a minute. 
the search results kept shrinking and shrinking and shrinking to where there was only 10 results in one page. And then I take the LLC out and I put Nova Crypto L or just put spaces in between and I get 1.5 million results. And so I'm like, this is a whole new thing. Like Google used to not behave like this, but it appears to me as it's actually truncating the list of relevant returns and not allowing you to see them. And it even showed me in one search result, it said these are omitted. Okay, it said at the bottom, it says admitted. You can see the whole list. Well, I hit refresh again, and that admitted thing is gone, and the list is shorter. So now it's not even giving me the option. So what I'm seeing is as I'm interacting with Google, it's making substantial changes over what's discoverable by me when I'm trying to identify what the heck is going on over here. So that's a threat to me. There's, I'm saying there's active manipulation and monitoring going on. Through- this, is why AI, this is why AI is deemed as the uh, greatest revolution of uh, humankind. <clears throat> It'll need blockchain as a, a trusted database, a trusted independent database. But yeah, um, AI is something, if I had the money, that's where my attention would be with blockchain as an afterthought of the database. Uh, we're building to it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> See, I don't even talk to a lot sorry. of people about it. Mark, you actually put your hand up. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't talk up, to Mark? people about it. Yeah, I'm uh, really interested in that uh, fun, weird dynamic we're all engaging in and that uh, Doug is uh, talking about, about uh, being a dude in a community and uh, and then uh, merging with this uh, with this actionable, like this tra- this friction, uh, this good, good traction, traction. Uh, system like a fractally team in this case random because from Doug's perspective it could have been any kind of a on the ground traction system uh, but uh, remember our purpose uh, has those four items and, and check them out and uh, and, and that, that accounts for like this uh, elusive strangeness that fractal is trying to crack the code on and uh, the immediate point uh, that I was going to uh, speak to about a few minutes ago when Doug was making a good sequence of points was a uh, uh, that is, you know, you and me being bilingual is secondary to me entirely. I don't care. I never did. Uh, you know, I, I like the, the idea of, uh, you know, plumbing or uh, taking potential energy, working with it. Well, language barrier. And so uh, increasing the bandwidth. I mean, I, nothing pleases me more than to have a beautiful fireside chat uh, globally. This has just never been done. So we have a global community, and uh, I think uh, translation might even bring all this sentiment back upward like ENF's trying to do. So I just wanted to point out that, uh, yeah, bilinguality, that would be one of those 10 additional questions, Marco, that we, we have very little emphasis on having to be bilingual or anything. Uh, you know, but if it was bilingual, then uh, it would be a, a bonus. You know, like I know, uh, Doug, you have an interest in Chinese right now, and Shah Cruz has been a trans- he translated MEA into Russian. <laughs> and uh marco we we're talking about this stuff so i want to learn chinese I, in the next decade i want to be fluent in chinese by the next in the next 10 years that's my goal i have a cousin that's a translator too well with ai translation tools uh with the babel fish in star wars where you just put it into your ear and you have real-time translation ability through technical solutions is, is where i want yeah. to go with that yeah 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 i was thinking about that too I don't want to have to learn traditional Chinese versus well, simplified. From what I'm gathering, the whole new user interface of the near future is voice. So forget about the keyboard, forget about the mouse, just start talking to your computer and issuing commands to it. And that's the whole new next revolution with computing. I'm also looking at quantum computing and, and quantum because of what's going on with the fractally in orbit stuff. Um, I've been looking into China's quantum communication. See, most people don't even know China uh, achieved quantum teleportation like two years ago through satellite. And so they're building a quantum communications well, network. I mean, a very, actually, not at a mass, at the, a very- The you know, teleportation thing was done by um, the Japanese and Swiss um, several years ago, where they're able to move a, uh, um, a tachyon or something through the earth. Um, so yeah, that, um, <laughs> just but, so but, you know, but China, do you guys China, think that's what those white tic tac uh, UFOs but, are basically? No, China did it with satellite. Is what I'm saying though that they're building a, a whole no, a series of nodes in a network. And but they're, when you get into blockchain and how quantum works and qubit, there's a whole new thing going on with that. Where basically this quantum technology could probably uh, upbreak or crack every kind of blockchain tech that we have now. But on the inverse side. With this quantum stuff, you can make an unbreakable 
type of thing. And it has to do with qubits in the, and the nature of thing being one and zero at the same time and all this stuff. So I started getting into that because I'm like, I'm a future thinking guy. You know, I want something that's going to last. I want to, I want to know what's coming ahead of the road. And so I'm looking at this, like, this is a huge, big thing up ahead in the road, but no one's looking at it. You know, I'm already talking about diarization and VTT and student teacher. And they're like, well, we're just trying to focus on the here and now. I'm like, no, I'm in the future, man. I'm like, I'm all over the place. So well, that's you why, have... do, you, do you know Ray Kurzweil? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, that, that, that's why he, is, uh, he, he has made uh, his, uh, his, his name because he was an inventor. He was just looking to put his uh, inventions in the timeline for the rate of change uh, of technology. And he found out the curve was was insane, and he just jumped tracks and decided to be a futurist. And and, and then and then he got hooked into Google's uh, 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 director of uh, of uh, artificial intelligence, um, and, and it's his first job he ever had. But that was only because he realized the future is in the singularity, not the tech solutions we have today. Uh, you and I, we're all localizing on like just being able to talk to the global. Uh, groups and more bandwidth or something or you know how to use the internet and have fun uh and they're preparing for like the total meltdown of everything uh with emphasis on uh um surrogate or uh simulated like simulacra and simulation whatever that that book's by inspired do you remember that that's the inspiration of the uh, matrix simulcron yeah si si simul yeah si uh it's a uh, simulation it's a simulation and a simulacra. So that's the name of the book. So to answer your question, Marco, when you came in here and you said, what are you guys talking about? What are we talking about? Every time I come to a meeting with Mark, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. So I was like, hey, that's a good question, Mark. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I was just as interested, Marco. I was like, what, yeah, are, like, you what, are, what are you, what are you going to talk about? What do you think we're talking about? What should we talk about? Yeah. Like, what were yeah. we talking about, Mark? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so, so we have a lot of these spontaneous meetings where we just, we, what we each bring to the table is something different. And this, our exchange and dialogue creates something. So we're happy to have you here to interject because you definitely bring a lot to the table. Yeah, and you take know? it away. I want to hear, Marco, yeah. any other uh, ideas on the meeting or this meeting? Uh, no, actually, I, uh, I got a few things on my plate I got to attend to pretty soon. But I thought the meeting was uh, relatively to the point uh, with Ryan, uh, as much as it could be, uh, as far as potential and stuff like that. Um, the swarms that uh, the bees do is interesting um, as far as uh, where they're going to settle in. Um, first, I thought, well, maybe there was a swarm for each language. Um, but, you know, if you're, again, translation is not just about language. Um, the swarms could be expertise in certain areas and stuff like that. Um, the uh, idea of EOS. Uh, going beyond the US is um, both dangerous and at the same time where blockchain is meant to be. Um, so I don't know how far Jesse's into that, but um, you don't need money. You don't even need crypto when you have blockchain and you exchange NFTs. You want crypto because you want that type of value. But if you assign everything that you would ever consume to an NFT, you can just trade that. Um, like you don't need money, you just need uh, to trade. You go to the market, you have a loaf of bread, and you trade it for a bag of apples. But doesn't the um, NFT go this way and the bag of apples go that way? I never can connect how we're going to use NFTs for real world value. objects. Crypto is units of value. The NFT is specific assignment to an asset. But the, but the asset and the NFT can be decoupled. Yeah, but what happens when you eat the apple? It's no longer, it's no longer apple. It's just a new apple replaces it or something? You give no. it to another guy and you don't put burn the it. NFT in his, in his wallet. Oh, you burn you it. Burn okay. the, you, can okay. burn, you can burn the NFT if you're going to consume I think about that. Okay. Don't but how about, how about the, 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 uh, the piece of art, my piece of art? Uh, I made it and I made an NFT. I sold it to a guy. The art is now in his hands. And uh, also uh, the uh, NFT is in his hands. And then he sells the art, but he keeps the NFT. Why do we care? He sells the art, but he keeps the NFT. Yeah, so now well, he the future, the NFT. The future, the NFT and the art are going to be one of the same. His um, NFT acts as like a title to the art. Here's, the, what, here's what crypto, and this is the uh, the uh, leapfrog thing. Crypto 
uh, ultimately, and we're getting close to that already, I'm already involved in some things um, like CryptoWriter and stuff, uh, Finney and things like that, where the NFTs are in crypto. So, and crypto is already being, being used as memberships. So, or NFTs are already being used as memberships. So NFTs are in crypto. So while you don't need crypto and you need the, the assignment to the consumable good, to the digital asset, or the NFT, that's a unique element. The NFT empowers the user on the level of, say, a developer maybe, where the NFT earns crypto. It empowers the user to become part of the blockchain because the NFT is part of the blockchain. Now, I still consider it consumable because even if you have like the Mona Lisa uh, ingrained into Ethereum or whatever, at, at still, you can consider the Mona Lisa as a consumable, um, as a real world good. It's just forever uh, consumable. So the only question becomes, is this an NFT that earns crypto, earns value, returns value in a, or dividends, or is it one that's latent? Um, I don't know, does that make any sense? I've been uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I still don't understand it, but that's okay because I think it's and it's clear. It's being used. It's being used it's, by it, gaming. I, I think I think what I got from you is the NFT can be useful and will be used more and more over time to a point where it's a part of the overall standardization of everything you'll have. It, it, you already, have the, it already is. Have you heard of color coins? Uh-uh. I have not. Color I will. coin. That will this will this will this will not only convince you, but it'll be like, okay. why haven't I heard of it? <laughs> okay. okay, Doug, have you heard of color coins? Nope. All right. By the way, I'm getting a lag here in the video. Color, oh. co color coins uh, were an attempt, I believe, on Bitcoin to um, paint um, specific coins on the Bitcoin blockchain. So those coins were forever painted. And then if they were moved around, um, you'd be able to tell. Those were considered the first NFTs, even though Ethereum likes to claim, like the crypto punks or like one of those things like to claim <coughs> the first NFTs, the first NFTs were actually the color coins. And from there, um, spurred the whole NFT thing. It's- That's pretty cool, colored coins. Okay, I see it on Wiki, yep. Well, that's, yeah, that's way back in the day. It's needed. You can't, you can't have a blockchain environment without the NFTs. Otherwise, crypto is just, you know, moving Bitcoin from one place to the other. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I look forward to it, but uh, coloring, uh, coloring uh, tokens on your average blockchains is, an, is a cool idea uh, to help facilitate the uh, excellence in the ability to uh, uh, create a, a, a non-fungible token. Uh, variants of the fungible tokens, for example, our one well, your, billion EOS. Your QR code, your your QR code. It's a reason for NFTs. The QR code in your background. But I have seven thousand EOS, and say uh, a thousand, uh, all seven thousand could be earmarked in certain ways across time. They you're could. saying, yeah, they, well, they could, but th that's not the point of the NFT. The color point was just to say we could do it. Um, so it's not really valuable, but the QR code you have in the background serves a specific purpose. So you want to forever uh, make it uh, permanent. But Something you're, you're saying out. blockchains and NFTs are basically going to emerge like a motherfucker. Is that I've what you're thinking? This. I, I've read about it. You have blockchain, which is a distributed ledger that people can write to. Okay. I've done this over and over and over again. Uh, blockchain is a distributed letter that ledger, accounting ledger that anybody could write to. So you don't need to copy paste your, um, the numbers on your, on your tax record or accounting or whatever. It's just one ledger everybody shares. You need keys to access that, right? So essentially everybody uh, using a blockchain is an administrator, like say the Google CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, and all that, they're sharing this one thing, like what Facebook tried to do with its hundred, um, its hundred posse of international corporations to make a quote crypto, which I call limited participation block, limited participation blockchains. 
Now that's a blockchain without crypto. So, but now you need value. You need value on that to, because you have multiple people using this one accounting ledger. Now the key allows you to control the information that you provide, but the value is to exchange between people. NFTs are the next step after crypto, something unique that doesn't change like a person's name on that accounting ledger. Um, your Eden NFT and, and things like that, those membership. What would Eden be if we didn't give away Eden NFTs? You have a EOS wallet, sure, but how do you program a smart contract to a crypto that can be, that's changeable, that's fungible? You need, for smart contracts to take the next level, you need unique assets on the blockchain and coins that are meant to just move value around don't suffice because each coin is worth the same. So you need, and if those, you need something that you could program on a blockchain and that is the NFT. You can't program um, say five EOS because those five EOS need to be broken down. So you need something that can't be Okay, broken down. okay, I like that, thank you. So like programmable, uh, uh, non-fungible token, uh, programmable. Targets, targets programmable. What did you call them, targets? Something that a program can target, and it can't target the crypto because it needs to be broken up. Hence, a smart contract will need to be broken up. That's cool, man. That's cool. I like it. Thanks. I'm glad I got something out of that because, uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, to to learn more and, and feel better about that. Unfortunately, I'm run out of time, but I'm glad we we're able to, uh, to do that. I'm going to hand your uh, host over to Doug in case you guys want to keep talking. Uh, I'll just do that because I can. But uh, I got to basically, the basic uh, water and I got to take a piss and <laughs> I got to go somewhere. I got a couple so, articles I got to write. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I've been doing this for like two and a half hours. I've been, uh, been moving today, which is very well worth it. I'm very happy. Uh, but, um, and also with this, Marco, I'm so happy you joined. And Doug, of course, uh, that post test. Think about how we view privacy in the West and how China views it over there and what kind of translation that needs, even if we're speaking the same language. So I'm here. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to change myself back to host and then end the meeting, but I can't. Doug, you have to give me host because okay. now I All realize right. we recorded it and Zoom is fuckery when it comes to host right, right, and right, recording. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I just handed the host over. I think I may have ruined our, uh, our recording, but uh, we don't care too much. But okay, basically uh, best practices. You're back to host now. Okay, great, great. Thank you. And uh, I'll uh, I'll look at that. Or you should be. Uh, I, I hope I am. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't even know how to test it, but I'm going to end the meeting and then you guys can start up a new one. How's that? Yeah. All right, brother. Uh, hey, nice to see you both. Yeah, Marco, you. you want to start another one? We could real quick, but I got... Uh, like, it's up oh, to you. Okay, if you uh, want to I'll let it go for now. Because I'm okay. great Any, anytime you want to, Marco, you got free time, just hit me up. Okay, I'm usually Congratulations free. on your Eden membership. Yeah, thank you. I'm stoked about it too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard and read, and that's great. I mean, yeah. Doug, that's so awesome. I got inducted the, like the night before, just a, a couple days ago. And then the very next day, we inducted uh, Matt's. And it was an interesting video. I want to see if I can get that video from uh, Mel Pierce. Who? Max? Max who? He's the guy who tipped me 50 EOS. Um, was Max, it Max Cho, a Korean dude? No, no, way. no, no, no. Okay. No. Maxim, Is it Max the Maxime something. He, you'll find, he, he was in the uh, Telegram group for a little bit. I got gotcha. you. And uh, he's, been, uh, he's been around since the beginning. Yeah, Eden is cool, Eden. man. Yeah, I'm glad you got on. Uh, yeah, that's great, man. Uh, it's, uh, this is great. Cool. All right, we'll see you guys. And like Marco, whenever you want it, if you just want him one-on-one -on -one and meet up and talk, just hit me up. I'm usually pretty flexible. I'm sitting behind a monitor a lot anyways. So think about it. Will do. All right. Take care.